all aspects. Wow. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Yes, this is the work of our Creator. The sun is up just about to come up over the mountains behind there. And good morning, good morning, good morning, friends. Good morning, good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today from the cool, cool parish of Manchester, Jamaica. Y'all hear my voice? I'm telling you, <laughs> something going on in this place. I'm here for those who have not uh, caught up with me for a little bit, but I'm here in Jamaica for the Temple Hall New Testament Church of God's Youth Retreat, of course, 2018. I was with them last year in the parish of Trelawney, and this year they have changed the scenery a bit, and we're at the Tropics View Hotel on the hill of Mandeville, a place called Hatfield. And it has been nothing but spectacular, nothing but a very inspiring experience. I mean, I'm here, my husband is here, my son is here, so, and they have something for everybody. You know, the speakers have been great, and the power of God has just been evident in the place. So, I'm out here this early because guess what? We had to get up at 5.30 for exercise. And standing right beside me, and I'm going to show you him right now, <laughs> is one of our persons on the youth board, Mr. Cleon Bennett. And last year, I did a short uh, live as well, and he was there with me. But, you know, I made sure that the crowd <laughs> has left because some of them think it was just too early to be up doing exercise, but that's how it is. And the place cool. So, Mr. <laughs> Cleon, good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Yes, good. Oh, you heard what he called me? He <laughs> called me Lisa because that is my childhood name. I mean, I've known this brother here for a very long time. We grew oh, up together. Life. Yes, we grew up together in the Temple Hall, New Testament Church of God. So, Cleon, please tell us what has this retreat been doing for you and what have you seen God do in the young people since we have got here Friday night? We got here like after midnight, so Saturday morning that. <laughs> <laughs> but what have you been noticing um, about or how has the experience been for you so far? Well, to be honest, it has been very good. Um, the first speaker, her name was Trisha Phillips. Um, dynamic woman of God um, and she really told she, she kinda, in, in Jamaican vernacular she lay she lay it down yes right she, she laid the cards on the table she did not left nothing uncovered right and um, persons persons literally were broken yes to the point where tears came yes when the anointing is is, is 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 present the bible says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke that's right so yokes were broken persons were set free yes um it's amazing how god works you know and to have done all of this in in basically Two short day, well, yes. one day so far. So far, yes. Um, it's it's tremendous. Um, yeah. And we must, we must give God thanks. Amen. He is doing marvelous things because Amen. trust me, it, it it's not finished. It's no, not, finished. not at all. I cannot believe today is Sunday already, and I you know, just for our our friends, just a, a quick thing here. The theme for this year's retreat is DNA definitely not artificial so we have been talking about being real right. being real and uh, how are you seeing you know the, the the topic and the speakers and the participants how are you seeing all of this coming together well you know um the being real part of it and i must say that this the, the dna theme mm -hmm. was a, is, a, is a borrowed theme okay um, from his name is Reverend Horace Aiken. Okay. A couple of years ago, we 
there, there was a play that he was supposed to do with the name. Um, same acronym, definitely not artificial. And so you can see that persons are beginning to introspect, do an introspection, you know? Yes. Persons are really understanding now and seeing that, yeah, um, I don't really have to live with the hurt from the past. That's right. Covering it up, living with it, bottling it up on the inside. You yes, know? yes. I can let it go. Yes. And yes. in letting go, then I can grow. And heal. Right. Yeah. Because there cannot be any growth without healing. Either. That's right. You really, you cannot grow without healing. Right. Um, just as the Bible says, in order to go forward, mm -hmm. we have to lay aside every Every heavy. weight. Every weight, yes. And past hurts and pain and grief and what, 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 what mommy did, what daddy did, what stepfather You could speak up did. a little louder, they're saying they're hardly hearing you. What mommy did, what stepfather did, what, what happened in the past. Yes. That thing that nobody knows but you. Right. But every time you remember it, it gives you that heart-wrenching, gut-tearing out type of feeling. Yeah. Let it go. Yes. Let it go. Shed. Shed everything. Because at the end of the day, forgiveness. And that is where it starts, you know. Key. Forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness is not for the offender. It is for you. Yes. The o it, forgiveness is for you first and foremost. And remember, the Bible says, if you don't forgive, then your father in heaven can't forgive you. Amen. That's the word. It starts with you. Yes. And it's going to end with you. That's right. You understand? Yes. So at the end of the day, I don't know what you might be going through mm -hmm. this morning, but the fact that you got up at this hour and tuned in, Yes. I believe, I strongly believe that what God wants for you if you get real with him. Yes. I remember somebody said in a seminar, go in front of the mirror. Strip yourself down to skin. Bear it all, as some people would say. Right. Go to God. Take it off. Yes. Take off the different masks. The masks that you wear to church, different from the school one, different from the work one, different from when you're, when you're out with your friend. Take off all the mask. Mm -hmm. Go to him. Because it is he that made us. That's right. So when I can cover up and nobody sees the scar here or the scar here. No matter how, many, how much clothes I put on. When I put on my three-piece suit and I step out. Everybody say, "Boy, you look good. Yes. But you're the fact. While they are not seeing the scars, because they are covered by the clothes, I can't hide the scars from God. That's right. Because he sees, he sees beyond the clothes. He even sees beyond the scars mm -hmm. to the heart. Yes. Because man look at the outward. That's right. But God looks at, at, at the heart. He looks at the root of the problem. And today, this very moment, let me say to you, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you've been through, where you feel you are now, where you're, where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we had a little break there, but go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Your, your, it doesn't dictate right. where you are going to be. That does not dictate your position that does not dictate your destiny right sorry where you are now mm -hmm. god has greater things for you yes and it doesn't matter if you feel people might say oh i have this i have this i have acquired um i have my master i have two or three masters right i have three four five more houses. degrees than a I, thermometer can i tell you yes I have all the things that are earthly. Yes. It does not mean that you are living your purpose. And the destination is purpose. When you're, 
we are all born in this world yes for one thing and that is your god-given purpose mm -hmm. all your gifts all your talents all your accomplishments you have acquired all of these things for mm -hmm. one reason yes the end product must be and will always be your god-given purpose yep agreed amen so until you come full circle yes and come to the understanding that god why am i really here right why did you place me cleon bennett here what is my purpose here mm -hmm. who am i supposed to be impacting right that's because it because there are lives for you to impact that's right you, there are persons that you don't even know, but they are waiting on your testimony. Amen. Amen. They are waiting on your testimony. Amen. So you've been hurt as a child. You've been raped as a child. Yep. You, 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 you've been molested by your own family members. Guess what? Somebody out there is waiting for your testimony. That's right. Because what you went through, you didn't just go through it. Because for yourself. Because you going through it's sake. It's nothing big. It's, and, it's, and, and what we learned yesterday is that it's not your fault. Amen. When you went through it. It is not your fault. It's not because it's not something that you did. Because you never asked for it. You didn't ask for it. Right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? God is saying, I allowed you to go through this. Mm -hmm. Because I have something greater in store for you. Yes. There are two or three or four or five persons who I need you to go to. An impact, yeah. Because your life is going to impact their life. And when your life impacts their life, guess what? Then you start a chain reaction. That's and right. the one, which is you, who impact, impacted the five, mm -hmm. that, that five going to impact another five. Amen. And you find out that it's like a tree. Yes. You start at a narrow tip and you end at a wide base. So though Amen. you might think that all that you're going through and you're saying, I can't bother. Mm -hmm. The storms of life are hitting me. Hard. I have no leaves left on my tree. Come on, somebody. I don't have any. Some of my branches are gone. Yes. But guess what? People will see, and this was revealed to me yesterday, last night. People will look at you. Talk to my brother. And they will see five foot. Yes. A tree outside. That's what they see. Yes. They'll see five foot. Yes. And when they look at the five foot tree, it has no leaves. It has no branches. It don't even it look like it can be no more fruit. It look like it a dry up. Yes. But guess what? What they don't see is what God sees. They don't see how wide the roots have spread. How deep the root has gone because it doesn't matter what you see on the outside. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. What is on the outside? Do Come on. Matter? Come on. Come on. Because until you are tested, until you are tried, then you won't know what is what you're made of. Hallelujah. Made of? That's right. What are you made of? There is purpose in pain. Of course. We cannot seem to forget and that. Was from that. Last year, yes, purpose that was in from pain. Last year purpose in pain yes. everything that you go through everything that the lord takes you through it's not just it's not just just a quick break there to get our friend out of the road but you know everything that we go through it's not just because you know the lord don't have nothing to do with our lives no. he wants us to grow as you said earlier and there is purpose in pain we true, yeah. sometimes wonder if God is trying to kill us. You know, I said that to my roommates, you know, we're having this discussion. And I say, sometimes it seems as if God is trying to kill us. But there is purpose in the pain that you go through. Carry on, my brother. You are going good. And Preach. You, you, <laughs> when you find that, you know, the, 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 sometimes the pressure. Yes. The pressure seems so heavy. Yes. But remember, gold. The process that it goes to to become gold. Yes. Fire. Pressure. Fire. Heat. Intense heat. Yes. It's almost like you are being tormented. Yes. But guess what? In order for you to come out as pure gold, yes. you have to put you under the fire. Oh. Because I forget out all the little impurities. 
That's the process. That's the process. That's right. Yep. Yep. So the 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 the, 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 the pressure mm -hmm. of the process yes. will bring forth your purpose. Hi, hallelujah. Say that. Yes, say it again. Say it slowly. Say it, say it slowly and say it loud. Say the it. Pressure. Yes. Of the process. Yes. Is what will, is what will get you to your purpose. Hallelujah. When you Got get it. to your purpose after gone, after being put through all of that process yes. and all of that pressure. Counts for something. When you come out, you know. Yes. Lord God, can I tell you something? Testify. When... I remember growing up. Yeah. I was sharing yesterday with my with, 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 with my pastor. Yes. I didn't believe that my father liked me. Hmm. Tell me about it. I, I really didn't believe that my father liked me. We had something called common entrance. You wouldn't know. Yes. Remember the common exam. Entrance. Yeah. When I passed common entrance, that year they raised the pass mark. You know. Wow. And. My mother told me, because my mother is a teacher, as you know, and she told me that they called her at the school and told her that if they had not raised the pass mark, I would have gotten a government scholarship. Hallelujah. The yeah. morning of the result, when everybody was happy for me, my father turned to me in the car and said, I did not know you could have passed. Ouch. 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 And from that day, it's like... This man don't like me. And I resented my father for it. Talk the truth, brother. Because guess what? Even though we lived in the same house all my life, guess what? We did not have a relationship. I didn't know him until my 20th birthday. Wow, wow. Wait, wait hold on there. We're talking about common entrance, which is about from you were about 12. Yeah. Because that's the exam that takes you from primary, primary school, school into, into high, high school. school. Yeah. So you're talking about a space of about eight years. Yeah. You're saying you and your father never have no dealings. No. Because you just feel same not like you. And then, you see, growing up, my father was a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Work so when first. I, when I wake up in the morning, you not see him. I don't see him. He's gonna work. Yeah. When I go to bed, he's not coming yet. Right. And so the cycle really, the next day. Same thing. It, yeah. And I just believe that this man just hate me. This man don't like me. Nothing I did was pleasing to this man. Until I remember I brought home a young lady. Hmm? And he took me to the side and he said, Look here, let me tell you something. This one is not for you. Eh, eh. All right. He did not even talk to the young missus, you know. Hmm. And he said, this <laughs> one is not for you. I've seen some mistakes made. You are not going to make that same mistake. The same father tell you this. And I found it strange. Yes. Because I'm saying, well, now you're trying to... <laughs> Be a father. Yeah. Oh, I've made my decision. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you that a couple... Not all months, weeks, within a two and a half, three, almost three week process. I then found out that the young lady had a child and was living with the baby's father. But she hid all of that. But my father picked it up. He knew. And then, after I got married. Mm -hmm. To some, to another. Yes. yes the, the right one. To the right one. And funny <laughs> enough. The very first time she came to the house is, is as if it was me she come to. Okay. I went in my room when I came out, I didn't see her. And I saw my mother in the living room and my brother in the living room. I'm like, what are they? They have big conference and you're not there. Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> and my, my mother said, check out the gate. My father and my no wife mm -hmm. spent the entire day out of door. Yes. Sitting down, having a marvelous conversation, and I was like, "What the hell? <laughs> What's and going my on?" My brother turned to me, <laughs> yes, and said, "Yeah, you're good with that one, yeah." Right. I said, "What do you mean?" The man, you know this? Uh, I the first one this. You know, session even region at the house, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're good with that one. All right. And to the point where, when I started to 
talked to my father, mm -hmm. then I started to realize that this man Love you. saw something in me that I never even seen myself. Wow. And you he took helped. that for hate? Yes. Because he, he, he was, my father was a man of very, very, very little words. Mm hmm I mean, me oh, I'm a see, see your mother yeah. creep up on the background there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Unlike me, my father, I'm on a very little word. Yes. And when I, 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 I after getting married, mm -hmm. I remember I was talking to him and I decided, look, you know what? I'm not carrying this no longer. Right. This must be it. Yeah. This is threshing floor type or something now. Right. We have to bury the hatchet. Yes. And not in each other's head. <laughs> bury the I like that. We're You're burying them. the hatchet but not in each other's head. <laughs> I like that. God and is we good. Sat and we talk. Can yes. I tell you the most shocking thing I found out that night? Tell us. Majority of the things. Yes. That I had my father open my heart for. Yeah. He did not even remember doing uh -oh. my Oh, hey, that's key. Stick a pin right there. You just said majority of the things that you had in your heart, thinking that your father did. I'm like, he didn't even remember. He did not even remember. That's them. that's the thing, um, Cleon. You you have said something very important because there are a lot of persons who are resentful. They're angry. They're yeah. bitter. All of that. And the person that they're feeling these feelings towards sleeping. You understand? They're sleeping. They're they're they're, they're resting when night comes. And that's why it's so important for us not to carry those kind of burdens. And it makes you sick. Because yes, it does. It manifests yeah. in your body physically, physically after a while because you're it's like you're poisoning your yeah. body with those negative, negative emotions, emotions you know i'm not gonna let it go i'm not gonna you know forgive no. anybody they don't deserve it you know why some people think that forgiveness means you're letting the people off the hook but god said vengeance is mine i will repay you know what we want to do we want we want, the vengeance. <laughs> we want to do the repayment david yeah. yes God says he's a man after my, my own heart. Yes. Why? He has a repentative spirit. That's right. And you know the funny thing about it? David was always the first one. Yeah. The first one said, God, if me do nothing. Yeah. He was always asking for forgiveness. Yes. You understand? Yes. The forgiveness is the key. God, that, 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 that. And he's a... It's a, it seemed like a very little insignificant key, no, but it yeah. opened the biggest door. It, yes, it, oh, yep, it <laughs> does. Forgiveness opens doors. It does. Forgiveness opened the gate. Yeah, oh, the gate. Okay. Yes. All right. So got it. When you, when you came into the property. Yes. When you came into Tropics View yes. Hotel. Yes. The little key of forgiveness is for you to come through the gate. Right. But when you come inside, after you have forgiven, yes. and you open that gate, and you see what God really has in store for you inside, yes. the, both, the, 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 the wonderful food, yes. the different rooms, the embellishment, you understand? The, the, all the things, because when you go to a hotel, you know, every, ro every room is not really the same. No, they're not. There's something different. But this property is great. We have been, you know, yeah, it's a nice place. You have, you, you, you have different, you have different trees. Yes. You have different rooms. Yes. You have, you have different activities. Yes. And all of these have to do with your life. That's it. When you open that gate of forgiveness and you will say look here i am letting it go i'm letting it go yeah me let go and you step out of unforgiveness into, into forgiveness yep. lord god, my, glory the lord god opens doors amen 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 lord, the scripture says amen. i will give you houses yes that you did not build that's right that's god's word god's word can't not lie our own. can't lie houses you never build yes Vineyards you did not plant. Right. You see, the thing is, we read the scripture. 
Yeah. And we just read the scripture. Yeah, just because read. Because we read. The, we, we know how to read. Yeah. And so we read. That's all. And somebody asks you, what did you... You know, I read the entire book of Psalm. But at the end of the day, yes. how did it impact you? That's it. Did it impact you any at all? Um, let's... Okay. Um, just pause there for a sec. Um, Cleon, come. Um, you're one of our youths here. Um, this is O'Neill, and I want to just stand beside, you know, Brother Clayon and just tell us how this retreat, sorry to cut in on you, Clayon, I just want to hear from him. He had to get up early, come up here. So, I want to hear from the brother how this retreat has been impacting your life. If you don't mind, and talk up a little because this mic is a little low on this phone. So, just tell us. Yeah. Well, um, this retreat was. Uh, let me just focus on him. My life yes. There, there are a lot of things I choose not to deal with because I find it strenuous. I find it hard. It's. I find it difficult to go to God to step, make that step and say I am hurting. And I find out for myself even before going to God that the people that are hurting me don't even know that they are hurting Ouch. me. Wow, wow, wow. And you try to get into their heads and say, remember, we are all of the same body. We are yeah. all of the same Christ. They yeah. are hurting me. We don't, doesn't have to happen. And they will try to say that, well, it is for the better because they are the elders, because okay. which is true. They do know. Yeah more than us the young ones but there are times the things of which you know to be right won't sit right for us the young ones because right as one of the speakers um said last night um the devil don't change no sir just the times change yeah so if you forgot how you got away from the devil when you were young. Yes. I need your advice on that. Amen. Now, Amen. I am hurting. Yes. I need you more than how I need your correction. I got you. I got you. Y'all heard that? O'Neill is saying that even in our quest as older people, because he's a young man, a part of this retreat, even in our quest to lead the young people right in the right way what he's really saying that sometimes it takes more than just the correction in and of itself it's how we go about it and we love during the process and it's interesting that when you started speaking you're you're touching on church hurt because we know about people who find it difficult like to forgive or let go when somebody punch you in your face you know if you're a woman and you're being abused even men we, yeah, I mean, that's taboo. We don't talk about men who are being abused, mm -hmm. but it's happening. So you can understand that kind of pressure, you know, people say, you know, we can't forgive. But we're talking about the, the institution, the organization called church, mm -hmm. where if we don't manage ourselves and manage people properly, church can mash you up. Me know that. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I'm not surprised that I'm hearing it from a young person because we have to be so careful. And I'm glad you said that, O'Neill. Right? We have to be so careful that in our correction, that we do it in love. Correction is yeah. supposed to destroy you. No. You understand? Correction is not supposed to destroy you. And I'm seeing it. We see where people fall into situations. And after the correction, we not see them. Yes, them no one have nothing to do with God. Why? Yeah. Because it wasn't done right. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing. When we realize that something was not done right, what we must do? Restore Correct it. Restore. Fix it. Yeah. All right, Brother O'Neill. Sorry if you step by your toe, right? That's about going in again. Tell us. So That's coming right. to this retreat now, I mean, we're only complete well, one day already. Mm -hmm. I mean, power falling at the place from yesterday, all day. Mm -hmm. What? Where do you think you are now? We know everything is a process. But what do you think you're looking forward to for today or how do you want to leave this retreat what do what must happen for you to when you leave you say yes i'm glad i went i must be lighter in the spirit light wow a big word that you know big. if you can come in with your with your bungle and your baggage you and you drop it, drop it and you feel light hallelujah yes. testify brother very lighter in the spirit because yeah there are a lot of things that we as young people go through, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. 
we smile about it, we laugh and we continue as everything. But you're hurting. Coming, but we are hurting. Yeah. So it festers and it doesn't get better. Right. But right. As Uncle Clayon said. Yes. Pressure. Yes. If you notice most of the nicest, purest things that we yeah. want or look forward to comes from pressure. Yes. Metal. Gold. Brother Clayon, the brother are preaching now. Diamond. He says some of the best things come from pressure. Gold. Yeah. Diamond. He heard your part of the, the sermon. <laughs> Carry on, O'Neill. <laughs> what pressure does is it breaks away what isn't needed of you wow. to be successful. What isn't needed of you to be your best you. Yes. So even though pressure isn't something that we want, like, or see necessary, yes. believe me, it is. So... Sometimes when you're going through a very rough patch in life, yes. don't look and curse God and say, why me? Yeah. Look on him and say, give me perseverance. That's right. Because That's right. Because when you make it through this rough time, someone else may fall in that rut and you yes. can guide them through. That's right. That's right. It's like that domino effect that Brother Clayon spoke about earlier, you know? But I'm telling you now, I'm Wow, is who that we have over there? Preacher man? Oh God. Well, him, I, I may not know if I can trouble him so early, you know. But, you know, Brother John and I, I'm, I'm just here talking to O'Neill, or one of our youths, you know, that is being impacted by this retreat. And he's saying some stuff and, you know, I know, say you stay like me. When I like the pan the camera thing, you know, because <laughs> this life thing, people who know that I do this, them hardly see me. I might show my face this morning, but, you know, we just finished our exercise, so I try to keep it low. But I am just so impressed with what our young brother here is saying, because he's saying this whole topic is DNA, definitely not artificial. And he's showing us that authentic side mm -hmm. of him, where he said, look here, man, this go on, you know, and this is how it impacted my life yeah. as a young person in the church. A lot of times we don't talk about certain things. They're taboo. You mm -hmm. know, if you're, if you're hurting, suck it up. Yeah. And one true, man up. And as a young man, I am really impressed with his candidness, his authenticity, yes, right. you know. And last night, Brother Janai, I don't put the camera up here, but <laughs> you, you, you deliver last night, you know. Yeah. We're having our mids, Pastor Janai Baptiste, and, you know, he delivered a word last night that it, it just transform lives upon the scene right on the scene right you know and i i am just so happy i came you think it is if you take ferry plane and bus and car <laughs> for come all the way a jamaica <laughs> for nothing <laughs> no sir you know it has been wonderful yeah, and yeah. this is sunday morning this is outside of my usual routine but i'm saying this is a place right now i would rather be nowhere else but right as well doing this, spending time with yeah. you guys and just seeing what God is doing in the lives of the young people. I'm glad we catch one this morning, you know, because <laughs> the rest of them do their exercise and they've gone in a long time. But, you know, friends, um, it's, it's something when we can be real, when we can be authentic. All right, Brother Cleon, turn it around for me. I'm going to stand up right side of the hill. I don't know if you can. You never know what I'm Right? <laughs> Am I there? Yes, you're yes, right there. I'm here. But I'm saying, right, it is something when we can be real, when we can be authentic. Watch a flyer try to take a selfie. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, let's keep it real. But it, it's realness. It's what's going to start the process, I believe, of healing in our lives. It doesn't matter what we're going through. If we cannot be real about it, if we cannot speak the truth about it, mm -hmm. then we're not going to reach our way. We have to start there. We have to start just like O'Neill when he said, look, me a young person, yes, but I was hurting. And the method and the way that correction is being done is hurting us. And yeah. I'm saying correction, it's not supposed to damage you. It's not supposed to kill you. It might, might feel like it's a kill you, but it's not supposed to damage you beyond repair. You're supposed to can bounce back. 
Yeah. Right? Well, mm -hmm. first of all, you have to understand that correction is necessary. Yes. It is necessary. Reproof is Because it helps you to grow and you make a certain mistake down the south. And you know, say, right, but now I walk the road there again. Mm -hmm. Right? But it is, it, the whole process, I truly believe, starts with being real, starts with being authentic. It starts with saying, God, see me out. Mm -hmm. Wake and do about my situation. Yeah. Don't hide it. Don't say I have appearances to keep up. <laughs> Cause you know how we like to, you know, we um we we, we call it what's the phrase? Grin and bear. Yeah. Grin and bear. Mm -hmm. The Sunday boy, the sun on my eye, the sun on my boy. <laughs> you can see me. Still? Yes, man. Yeah. Right. So I'm saying it doesn't make sense for us to pretend. Or to, as we say, grin and bear. Mm -hmm. There comes a time when we have to bear our soul, just like you said, Cleon, yeah, and say, God, Simeon, help me. Yeah. Ball out, ball out for help. Because if we keep on pretending that everything is all right, we're not going to get the help. Mm -mm. We're not, that woman with the issue of blood, she pushed through and she got her healing, she got her deliverance. If you look by your situation and say, Boy, I mean, nobody know you now. Because by right, even that woman should not have been in that crowd. According to their laws, mm. according to what she was having happening in her body, mm -hmm. boy, she shouldn't even out there. Right, and the lady make true. up her mind and said, I need my deliverance, I need my healing. Mm -hmm. And she pushed through. Now, we look at that story all the time. And we can preach it today, preach it tomorrow. But at the end of the day, we cannot lose the essence of the message is that if she never push, um, the Bible says, and a certain woman, we yeah. still don't know her name, no. but if she never do that, we wouldn't hear about she at all. <laughs> you understand? We wouldn't hear about she at all. So I'm saying today, friends, you see me come on camera, you know, me not do this. You know, <laughs> and an early morning too. <laughs> Just to say to somebody today, be real, be yeah. authentic. Yeah. You have to start with that. You have to start there. If you can't do that, the help I'm going to take a little longer because we never know if you're going to get it because nobody will know for sure. Right. Yes, we have discernment. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to say, God, you I have need to help. Up. I need the help. I need healing. I need more of you, Lord. Yeah. And that is my prayer that as we leave this retreat tomorrow, that everybody will leave here transformed. Yeah. We leave here feeling empowered Lives because be we're getting the information and it's what we do with it now. You know, that, yeah. as I said, Brother John and I mashed up the place last night, you know, and the young people's lives were touched. You, you, can, you can see the transformation that's taking place already. And that's why I'm going to come back in a clear hand. <laughs> come and know, so last year was great, but this year is even greater. Do we have bigger numbers this year? We had 37 last yes, year. Yes, I'll never we, we, forget that yeah, number. Man, I think we are up to 48. What? Yes. Almost 50. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think them said the money was more, but you see it? More come. Yeah. But I just want to say to God be the glory. I'm here, you know, all the way from BVI, and I came here just for this. Right. Just for this. And I like what I'm seeing. I like being a part of the ministry. I like, you know, being able to support what God is doing Amen. in this time. Because we keep hearing it all in soon come and all of that. But what are we doing to prepare ourselves? Things like this, where we empower young people to move and get on fire for God. Young people not for shy and not for afraid for send them a Christian. Amen. You understand? That's young true. people for stand up in a them school, in a them college, in a the workplace and declare Christ. Yeah. Why? Because the time is short. You know, their lives will tell a story that their friends can emulate and say, you know, someone want where you have though. One of the speakers say, if your life is not enticing, then it's going to turn people off. And mm -hmm. them want to spit you out more than embrace you. Right. And we have to understand that a as a Christian. Yeah, we have to live the life and live it for real. This is real life. Mm -hmm. We're living this authentic Christian life right now. All right. So, friends, that's my encouragement for you today to live real for Christ. Be authentic. Live for him. Live for Christ. Because that's the only thing right now that's going to take us beyond what we already know. All right. So, again, 
I am at, I'm going to come out of the camera now, come up on the other side. Right, just to say that we're at the Tropics View Hotel in Mandeville, Manchester, Jamaica. The cool, cool Mandeville, Manchester. A very lovely place. And it has been just a pleasure just being here to share with these young people from the Temple Hall, New Testament, Church of God. I mean, that's the church that I grew up in. So it is an absolute pleasure just to be back to share with them in this manner and the Lord has been doing some real things all right good morning sister Annie good morning so we're wrapping up now because we have been going at this for a little while and I just want to say to you who joined in today God bless you it's so many of you I mean I lose count now you know but morning Rochelle good morning Adrian good morning some of you may have already gone but good morning good morning Sister Jackie D, good morning, Ronald, all of you, Rex Seller, all who came on, Simone, Kimisha, all of you, God bless you, Nadine, Charmaine, Marsha, all of you, all right, may the Lord bless you from cool, cool Jamaica, <laughs> the land of my birth, but you all know I live in the British Virgin Islands now, Talmita, good morning, that's my friend in the Bahamas, right, so God is so good, it's the same God everywhere, we just came out of a very powerful move in the Bahamas, you know, at a, a crusade there by the Believers Faith Outreach Ministries, and that just kind of set, you know, my soul on fire for what's happening here in Jamaica now so I'm just checking out now but before I go I just want to pray for somebody because you all know you know we need strength we need to know that the Lord is there it doesn't really matter what we're going through he is there so I would like to pray for somebody today that the Lord will give you the strength to carry on in your walk with Christ and even if you don't know him that you know you will come to know him because I know the spirit of God is drawing you all right it's drawing you so let's pray Lord we thank you this morning we bless your name we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your grace Lord we thank you for your goodness we thank you oh God that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice in it we thank you father that you have given us another chance another day another time another space just to say thank you Lord for your goodness and every person oh God that's watching that's listening even those who will come on later I pray Lord that you will cause them to stop and look at their lives look at their lives in such a way where they they see you God they see where you want to take them they see what you're doing in their lives at this time Lord I thank you that you're already transforming people you're turning them around you're doing something marvelous you're doing something wonderful in their lives and Lord those who are hurting those who are struggling with forgiveness Lord I pray that you will just transform them lord give them a heart a heart of love a heart of compassion a heart that says yes they did me wrong yes i didn't deserve it yes it seems like I'm letting them off the hook, but Lord, I turn it all over to you because you did say in your word that vengeance is mine. So Lord, I thank you today that there are some people who are making a definite decision to let go and let you take care of it all. So Lord, bless your people today. Let them go on out, those who are going out to church, let them go and let them, oh God, experience you today and encounter with you today in the mighty name of Jesus. They will never be the same again. So Lord, bless their lives. You know everything that they're facing. Bless them, Lord. And I give you thanks today because you are good. I give you thanks today because you are great. And I give you thanks today, Lord, because you have heard our prayer. So thank you, Father. Thank you for that decision that somebody's making even right now to just let go and let you, God, fix their stuff. So, Lord, I honor you today. I honor your name. I praise you. I adore you, Lord, because you are good in everything, oh God. Let us give you thanks in everything. We will give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. So friends, you take care now. You take care now. Be good. And, you know, I will try to do a check-in again before I leave Jamaica, uh, which will be soon. But 
God bless you and thanks again for being a part of today's video and until we meet again in this fashion y'all take care God bless you